Are there any more good barbers? That's the question. Judging by the comments, y'all saying, yeah, it is a lot of good barbers. There's still some good barbers out here. So, reason I say that is this. So, before we get into the video, I need you to subscribe to my YouTube. Hit that notification bell. That way, you can get a notification whenever I drop something new. If you find any value in the video, I need you to hit the like button as well. Now, I've been in the game over a decade, right? And I built myself up from the barber that's behind the chair to the barber that was able to grow his social media, monetize that following, and also establish myself as a leader in the industry. You hit the ebook link down below, you will see that I have ebooks that will help you achieve every level that I have achieved. I got ebooks to teach you how to build clientele, personal development, growing your social media, and also how to navigate as a six-figure barber. And I also have a newsletter. You can visit coldcuts.com, sign up for my weekly newsletter. That way you can stay up on game on what the topic is or what the next subject going to be. You can be a little bit ahead of the game. You see a lot of content dropping, but you want to get ahead of that. You want to know what the topic is for the week? Subscribe to my newsletter so you can stay on top of that. If you want to reach your full potential as far as cutting hair, you want to use the best tools possible, right? You can visit clutchbarbersupply.com. Use code COLDCUTS10 and get you a 10% discount on some of the most prestigious tools available on the market. As an experienced barber, it's only right that I have coaching packages available. I got a one-on-one -on -one coaching package where you jump on the call with me every week and I teach you how to navigate in the game, teach you how to navigate on social media and all the things that you need to be successful as a barber. I also have a one-on-one -on -one in-person training where I come to you no matter what city or state you in and I coach you for an entire week right coming to the shop with you I'm coming to the gym with you we're gonna get you right I'm gonna put you on my program and I'm gonna get you right and have you ready as long as you keep doing those things you can visit coldcuts.com and get access to those as well and if you can't pay it all out of pocket up front we'll partner with PayPal pay later to where you'll be able to make payments in small increments over an extended period of time, but you'll be getting the value immediately. So make sure y'all check that out at coldcuts.com. Grab you some of these ebooks, grab you some of these products. That way you can get ahead in this industry and you won't be behind. We trying to go to the next level, baby. Let's get back into the video. There's a lot of barbers. There's a lot of barbers that became barbers because they wanted to make money, right? And, 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 they don't really care about people. They ain't really trying to be a service to the community. They ain't really getting this game, you know, to, to you know, to, for the people. They ain't getting the game for all that. They ain't coming here to be a community leader, a mentor, a brother, a friend, advisor, counselor, all that stuff. They ain't coming to the game to be none of that, right? They ain't even coming to the game to give out the best haircuts to build confidence. A lot of barbers became barbers because they want to make some goddamn money. And guess what? That's cool, right? But along that journey, I'm going to need you to do what good barbers do. Why are you making your money? Can you, at least, can, can you at least do that? If you got into this game just for money and just to make the money, right? If you got into this barber game just to make the money, can you at least... Do what good barbers do along the way, right? And that's one of the problems that we're having right now in the industry when they say good barbers are few, far, and in between. I can't tell you how many times I get new clients. I'm here in Houston, Texas, the city with the most demand for a barber in the country, right? Check your stats, check your statistics. If you know about barbering, you should know that. So, we got the highest demand for barbers in the country. Why is it that people, why is it that barbers like me tend to get overbooked? I got too many clients and I got too many people trying to get in my chair. And big as this city is, it's supposed to be hella barbers here that's, that's, that's uh, available to take clients. Time and time again, I get new people that says, I get new people that say, man, it's hard to find a good barber. So after I check them and make sure that 
it ain't them. Because I'm quick to tell a, a, a client, hey, it's probably you. If you bouncing from barber to barber to barber, it's probably you. Sometimes it ain't the barber, it's the, it's the, the customer, right? Because some people act like customers and not clients. But when they tell me their stories and they tell me some of the things that barbers are doing and the ways that barber are, the ways that a lot of barbers are conducting themselves, I realize that there's a lot of barbers that got into this game just to make the money. They ain't come in the game for all that extra stuff. They just want their money, right? And I'm cool with that. But along the way, just make sure you do the things that good barbers do while you're making your money. Otherwise, you're messing it up for the rest of us. See, barbers got a bad reputation. In this city, a lot of barbers got a bad reputation because a lot of barbers just got in it for the money. And they ain't doing what good barbers do along the way while they making their money. So I'm saying this. If you're on this live, if you got into this game... Because you just wanted to make money, okay. But at least along the way of you making your money, just do what good barbers do. Give out some good haircuts. As best as you possibly can. I mean, to the best of your abilities. I need every person come out of your chair. I need you to be confident that that was the best that you can do. Right? And, and, and treat people right. Just treat people right. When they come in, appreciate them for coming spending their money with you. Okay? Uh 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 have a clean environment. Don't be don't 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 have a a, a a disrespectful environment. Treat people well. Right? Be on time. Just just be on time. You know what I'm saying? Just be on time. You got in the game for money, I get it. But just be on time. Just do what good barbers do. While you making your money, please. Right. Stop taking your smoke breaks. Stop. Stop taking your smoke breaks in between clients. Stop leaving the client in the chair saying, hold on, wait a minute. Go and step outside all on your phone, smoking your joint. And this person sitting there waiting, waiting for you to come back in. And then they create this narrative in their head. All barbers like that. They create this narrative in their head that all barbers are like that. And because you got in the game just for the money, you fuck it up for the rest of us barbers. Now the reputation bad. Now you got everybody running trying to cut their own goddamn hair because they don't see the value in paying a barber because the barbers that he went to got into the game for money. So they ain't treating the people right and respecting the people's time and all the other shit they supposed to be doing. All the other shit that good barbers do, they ain't doing. So then you fuck up the game for the rest of us. Now everybody going and then a lot of people going running back trying to cut their own hair, giving themselves chili bowls and shit, just because they don't they're not getting their they they haven't got their money's worth from these barbers who just got in the game for money. Now I'm not saying I'm suffering from a shortage in clients because when they discover a barber like me, a barber that knows how to retain clients, a barber that actually cares about the haircut. A barber that actually cares about mentoring people, counseling people, uh, that's actually interested in people, right? That's treating clients right. Then I become rare and now everybody wants to try to come book with me. Then I get overbooked. I'm not saying it's a bad problem to have. What I'm saying is that. This is a major problem in the barber industry, right? A lot of y'all got in this game just to make money. And that is okay. But at least do what good barbers do while you're making your goddamn money. Because if you're going to get into this game, if you're going to choose the barbering industry to provide you with a substantial amount of income or, or a lucrative uh, amount of income and, and provides you with a lucrative career that makes you make a good income at least do what good barbers do right so if you say damn i want to be a barber because i want to make money okay cool you don't care about people you don't care about none of that okay cool but just see what a good barber does and when you get in this game start doing that please just start doing it 
because you mess it up for the rest of us barbers and and people got this this preconceived notion of a barber right they got this perception of a barber and it's bad they think we all cocky they think we all take smoke breaks they think we all disrespect people's time they think we all put our homeboys in the chair before uh them and skip our homeboys and family members up in front of them in the chair they think we all give our chili bowls they think we all just want the money right this is how people think they say those barbers look at my comments it's all in my comments online they say, man, these barbers this, these barbers that, right? People will spend their money if they see that they're getting value from that. And it ain't just a haircut, right? So if you got in this game just to make money, understand that good barbers don't just do haircuts. Good barbers bring value to people. See, good barbers are in the business of people, not just making money. You can, you can not be a barber and own a shop. And make money you cannot be a barber and come out with a product and 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 make money right you cannot be a barber and find other ways to to get into this industry to make money we see it all the time with a lot of barber expos they just in it for the money ain't never stood their ass behind a chair for a long period of time and actually cut some hair and built community right we see it all the time you do not have to get behind a chair and cut hair and deal with the people in order to make money. If you want to come in on the business side, come in on the business side. But if you're going to decide to get behind a chair, which is the business of people, you're going to have to at least do what good barbers do, right? This is to uphold the integrity of barbering, right? Uphold the essence of barbering. I'm going to tell you like, I'm going to take you back to the street right quick. So, if this was my block, and I hustle on this block, me and my partners hustle on this block, and, and this is where um, all my people make money at, my clique and my crew make money on this block, we sell dope or whatever it is, if that's how we do it on this block, and then you come your ass around here beating up my dope fiends, you come around here uh, uh, selling fake dope to my dope fiends, messing it up for the rest of us, we gonna kick your ass and probably kill you. That's just street talk, okay? But see, same way in the barber industry. Okay, you came in it just for the money, but this our block, this us, us real barbers that got into the business of people while we make our money, this our block. Barbering is our block. And if you're going to come over here and make some money, you need to do things the way that we do things. Or we should kick your ass. We should kick you up out of here. We should boycott you. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, if you got into this industry just for the money, that's cool. That's fine. That's, that's cool. But at least do what good barbers do. At least do what good barbers do. And good barbers build community. Good barbers care about people. Good barbers care about people's time. Good barbers uh, mentor little boys with no fathers. Good barbers uh, counsel uh, people. Uh, well, good barbers give people therapy sessions, unlicensed therapy sessions, right? Good barbers actually care about people. Right. And, 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 and you see a lot of people these days complain about barbers prices. It's not that the, the price went up so damn high with the inflation. I'm sure they get paid more at their jobs, whatever. Right. I'm sure that they found a way to, to uh, make ends meet because if, if everything else is inflated, at some point, their job is going to pay them enough to keep up with inflation. Cool. It's not that. It's not inflation. Why they tripping? It ain't that our prices are so inflated. It's just that they're looking at their money and then they're looking at the value that the barber brings. I ain't talking about just a haircut because you only cut hair so good. They're looking at that. They're like, what the hell I'm paying 40, 50, and $60 for a haircut for when this person is taking smoke breaks in the middle of the cut? 
when this person shops me like weed, when this person disrespects my time, when this person um, um, talk to me any kind of way, when this person skipping their homeboys and family in front of me, like, what the hell am I paying a person like that for? This person ain't ever at the shop when I pull up, right? They start to think more, right? So it's an interesting time for barbers because the price points we at now, people are thinking before they spend money. And when they think about the value you bring as a barber and the way that you do business and the type of person you are, they're going to be real strategic on who they choose to get their money to. They'll spend it. They ain't tripping, but they're going to be strategic of who they spend their money with because now it ain't a little $10. It ain't a little $15 no more. It's $40, $50, $60, even $100 now. People will spend it, but they're going to think about it before they spend it.